الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم من بعد it's a very painful thing to the community of muslims to have to deal with so many different groups and sects that speak ill of ahl sunnah and on top of that so many people they claim to be from ahl sunnah you have the ashariis you have people who change the names and meanings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes they say they're ahl sunnah you have people who make tawaf around graves they circumambulate around graves and they consider themselves ahl sunnah you have people who destroy and kill and take the lives of innocent people and they claim that they're ahl sunnah but there's a beautiful qawaid or qaida in fiqh which is al ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat meaning that the proof is not in the name of something what in what it's called but it's in the reality of its substance so when an individual claims that they're from ahl sunnah or claims that they follow the salaf as saleh or claims that they're salafi they the proof is in what they believe is their belief is their methodology in dawa is their uh their way of dealing with other people is it in accordance with the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the methodology of the pious predecessors beginning with the sahaba the tabi'in with tabi'a tabi'in that is the proof it is not in what an individual calls his or herself so with all of the statements out there with all these internet sheikhs and youtube muftis out there who claim to be from ahl sunnah and who speak ill about ahl sunnah and and, and make fun or slander the salafis we have to look at what they're what they're calling the people to and it is so shameful as allah the almighty says wa tasmu bi habli llahi jami'an wa la tafarraqu allah says hold on to the rope of allah and do not divide into and do not divide The rope of Allah meaning what as the mufassirin explain meaning the Quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and some increase that to say and the understanding of the sahaba the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa rashidin al mahdiin it is upon you my sunnah and that of the rightly guided khalifa meaning abu bakr umar uthman and ali رضي الله تعالى عنهم اجمعين so it is their sunnah did they negate the names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did they distort the names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the meanings did they uh twist and come up with new expressions and did they make their aql you know make taqdeem aql al naql did they put forth their intellect over what the nusus what the quran and the sunnah said and what the sahaba understood absolutely not because they were the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum majma'in but unfortunately these new deviant sects and deviant individuals they're the ones who use their intellect before the the nus the nus before the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is a characteristic my brothers and sisters in Islam of all the people of innovation as you see that they will prefer their intellect before they go to the text and this is a radical departure from what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with and a radical departure of what the Sahaba came with radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and the religion that they per, uh, protected why for example when we wipe over our khufain when we wipe over our socks during the uh, to prepare ourselves for the prayer we wipe over the top of the socks as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did we don't wipe the bottom which the bottom is the area which would actually be getting dirty but the people of who use their intellect to proceed the text they might prefer to wipe the the bottom of their socks or in fact if they use their intellect maybe it might as individuals differ in their intellectual capacities 
Maybe someone else will say, hey, I don't even need to make wudu anymore for salat. Because my intellect leads me to this. My, my intellect led me to that. Whereas another individual say, no, my intellect led me to, I'll make half of a wudu. Or I'm going to take a full ghusl. I want to wash my whole body. But that's why Ahl Sunnah is Ahl Sunnah. Meaning that those are the people who hold on to the Sunnah. That they go with the nas. They go with the text. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If tarakat al-yuhud ala itta wa sab'in firqa. The Jews broke into 71 sects. With tarakat al-nasara ala itta natain wa sab'in firqa. And the Christians broke into 72 sects. With satif tariku hadi umma ala thalatha wa sab'in firqa. And this community will break into 73 sects. Kulluha fin nar ala wahida. All of them in the hellfire except one. And they said, Man hiya ya Rasulullah. Who are they ya Rasulullah? He said, Ma kana alayhi he said, وسلم, those who are upon what I'm upon and my companions. This is what we are upon. This is what defines someone as Ahl Sunnah. It isn't just a name. We hear so many groups and individuals claiming this. And the Prophet وسلم, also warned us. He said, Du'at ala abwaba jahannam, to beware of them. Beware of those people who call to the hellfire. And those people are even people, no matter how nice their, their clothing are. He has a nice beard. He has a big, uh, huge turban and a long tail in his turban. His stove is very short. His stove is ex- exceedingly white. That's not what's going to get you into paradise. Those are outward expressions of Iman. Nam. However, if their belief, if the assass of what they believe is not intact, then in fact, if they are a caller, they're calling to the, they're calling to the hellfire, to the gates of the hellfire. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Du'at ala abwaba jahannam, and whoever answer them will enter it, will enter that hellfire. Stay away from the Du'at ala abwaba jahannam. Those people who say, for example, they say that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks that he ascended above his throne, they say, no, 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 no. I know Allah said, Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa. Allah said, uh, the most merciful ascended above his throne. But no, 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 no. We say, because our intellect leads us to say, it means power. Or it means estola. That, you know, Allah took the throne by, by force. Or it means this, or it means that. So they say that. But the Prophet ﷺ left it as it was. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, spoke about himself by saying that he rose above his throne. Azza wa Jal. And the people of supposed intellect, and as we mentioned that people's intellect is differs on different levels, they will tell you that such and such means power. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Yanzalu Rabbuna Tabarak wa Taala kulu thulu thalayl al akhir." That Allah descends to the lowest heavens in the last third of the night. Ahl Sunnah says that what the Prophet ﷺ is Sahih, and we say what the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala descends to the lowest heaven the last third of the night. That's what we say. Khalas in Tahina. But you say, or those individuals say, it is not befitting to say Allah descended. But Allah, in, in accordance with the statement of the Prophet Wasallam, descended to the lowest heaven. Descends to the lowest heaven. Why can't we accept that? You say it is not befitting, but, Allah, but the Prophet Wasallam said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. And so you say that it means power. But the Prophet Wasallam said, Leave it as it is. Ahl Sunnah doesn't ask cave. They don't ask how. And what is even more amazing than this is that many of these, these callers to the Ash'ari creed and the Sufi creed and those Tekfiri creeds and those Jihadi creeds and methodologies that live in the West from the... Uh, the native speakers and the non-native speakers. But what's more amazing is that some of these people are native speakers and they don't speak proper English. You see that the aslub, even the way they teach the people, 
There's nothing knowledge-based. You don't hear any text. You just hear their intellect and you hear their mouth spewing forth uh, um, speech and philosophy as if it's a water fountain being poured forth. But you don't hear qala Allah wa qala Rasul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and the Prophet sallallahu said. So my Muslim brothers and sisters, look to those things and make your own decisions. But be cautious of those people who distort and negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine characteristics. Allah says he rose above the throne, but they say no, it means power. Allah says, uh, uh, you know, the Prophet sallallahu said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven, but they say no, it means this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs. But they say no, 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 Allah doesn't laugh. He does this. This is what the Prophet sallallahu we're Muslim. We follow Kitab wa Sunnah. We follow the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alayhi atta salatu wa salam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of all our sins and guide the people of deviance to quit spewing forth deviance. Guide them back to the truth and help in the da'wah to calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion according to the Quran and the Sunnah and leave extremism, extremism in thought and ideology and that which goes to Jawaz al-Had, that which goes beyond the bounds.